Today I'm going to tell you how I use the Canon EOS R for outstanding Milky Way photography. Let's go! Thank you for joining me on this video. You're a beautiful person and you're a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first to tell you that. Hit that like button on this video if you like it. Really appreciate it if you would subscribe and stick around and enjoy the content. Video after video, I wanna make good, relevant content for you, particularly about my journey with the Canon EOS R for portrait photography, event photography, um, and landscapes as well. All right, we wanna tell you about how to make a great Milky Way image to make this video kind of a strategic approach to Milky Way photography with the Canon EOS R, I divided my approach into five main areas to remember. So these are tips on stability, tips on your attitude, tips on focus, tips on exposure, and tips on making an image that's relevant or relatable to the viewer. So let's start with stability. The first thing you want to know about stability is tripod is a must. You're gonna have the shutter open for a long duration, a number of seconds. You have to have a tripod to have your camera on for a solid foundation so there's no or very, very, very little movement. That's a must, tripod is a must. Second, use the touch screen on the back of your Canon EOS R to trigger the shot. So you can use a remote, you can use the app. There's other ways of triggering the shot, opening the shutter, but I use the touch screen on the back and I found that that was very effective. And I used it in combination with the two second timer. So the touch screen on the back, any motion of the camera from touching the screen is eliminated by that two second window and then your shutter opens with a two second timer. So you can also be in the shot and ask a friend to trigger a shutter, but you want them to use your app or a remote or um, the, the two second timer. So make sure for stability you have the touch screen enabled, you have the two second timer, and you use a tripod. So those are all T's. Touch screen, two second timer, tripod. Remember that for stability. Attitude tips. Now, you're gonna be out in the dark at night and it's hard to see where you're going. I was out in Joshua Tree and I felt that I was disoriented and so you have to prepare yourself for setbacks. You drop something and it's hard to see, it's hard to find it. So you wanna prepare your attitude for setbacks. It's not gonna be easy out there in the dark taking these shots that have multiple seconds where the shutter's open and there's some processing time. You're gonna to wanna to build in some patience to your mental approach be prepared to invest the time to get those shots. You wanna be ready to invest that time. So be prepared for setbacks and be prepared to invest the time to get the shots that are required. These are gonna be amazing shots. They're worth it. Third is focus tips. So here are the things I want you to remember that help me to get the sharpest focus for your Milky Way photography with the Canon EOS R. One is you wanna use Canon's built-in live view. So that means you're looking on the viewfinder to see the live view of the sky. You're gonna find the brightest star on the screen and then you're gonna use your focus check magnification to zoom in on that star to make sure it's tack sharp on that part of the image to make sure the rest of the sky is in focus like you want it to be. You're also going to use the manual focus. This is important. You can get a sharper focus with manual focus than autofocus. And you also want to turn on the cinema guides on your Canon EOS R, which activates a box on the screen and these kind of crosshairs that align as the object comes into focus. Use the cinema guides, use the manual focus, use the focus check magnification to see that brightest star up close and see how sharp you can get it and then also make sure you're using the Canon EOS R live view. Trust your eyes, I wear reading glasses so I have to have those out so I can check the focus on the live view screen. So make sure that you're trusting your eyes and not just when the uh, cinema guides light up green because sometimes you bump the camera and it sways back and forth a little bit and um, always trust your eyes and go for that um, pinpoint focus when you're zoomed in using focus check. All right, so that's stability, that's your attitude, that's focus. What about exposure? How do you, in the dark night sky, get the best exposure? That's a good tip, the dark night sky. You have to get to a place where there's no light pollution. And so we went out to Joshua Tree and that meant driving hours outside of Orange County and LA, 
And I found that even in the 29 Palms, which is a very, very remote location, there was light pollution from uh, the buildings, the city, uh, the town right there. And so it wasn't until we got into the park and to the dark campground that the sky really looked like I thought it should, like I wanted it to. So go to a very, very dark place away from cities, away from light. And that might mean going hours out of your way. It did for us. All right, for exposure, you've probably heard the rule of 500. So you take 500, divide it by your focal length, and that gives you the number of seconds you can have the shutter open and not really get star trails or the white um, pinpoint of the stars starting to make a horizontal or curving line with the orbit of the Earth. All right, sounds complicated, but trust me, I'll just give you an example. Uh, 500 divided by my focal length of 35 millimeters for the 35 RF lens. Divide that, 14 seconds. So I knew going out into the desert to Joshua Tree, 14 seconds, and that's where I started. I actually found that my camera was pretty high performing and I actually cut down the exposure time to eight seconds because I felt like I could get a sharper image and I was getting enough light. So that's another tip for um, exposure, is kind of base it on what you see your camera performing at. Another thing is ISO. I saw one article say start at 3200. I looked in, uh, in my metadata and I was around 500. So with the Canon EOS R, I wouldn't boost up your ISO to 3200. Try around 500, see where that gets you. That was plenty for me. And I got some amazing images at ISO 500. Another tip for exposure is use a low f-stop lens. Yes, so I have a 1.8 and that was a brilliant choice. No pun intended, no, I take it back, pun intended to let in a lot of light. So the lower the f-stop, you shoot at f1.8 or f2, f2.8, so you're letting in a lot of light. That's gonna help the exposure turn out right. All right, so just to round up those tips, get to a dark place, follow the rule of 500, use your ISO to help bring in the light, and use a fast lens, low f-stop values, please. The last thing is how to make your image relevant or relatable to your viewer. So you have a great exposure, it's in focus, but what makes the viewer care about it? This is tricky because it's a magnificent image, but usually what helps is some foreground interest. And so learning what you can do to compose your shot to make it relevant to the, the viewer is really important. So if you can have like an old car, a barn, a structure, some rocks, like at Joshua Tree, we had some amazing rock formations um, and we were able to put those in the foreground, which you can do as a silhouette, or you can actually do some light painting and paint them with a source of light, like a flashlight or something like that to help illuminate them. And so that's a good way to help make it relatable. Why does this work or how does that become relatable? It works because the magnificence of the Milky Way is almost too much to take in and you help give that element of contrast or surprise or shock by showing, let's say I saw this in one article, uh, someone sitting in a camp chair and they're illuminated in the shot before the majesty of the Milky Way. So that's one thing. You've probably seen the shots where there's a camper or a hiker and they're wearing a headlamp pointed up at the stars. And that helps introduce an element of surprise or shock or contrast. That makes the image relatable to the viewer because they can put themselves in that position and go, oh, that's how big I would be or that's where I would have this perspective if I were in the image in that place. So remember that, keep it relevant and relatable to the viewer by using foreground interest or putting a subject that's clearly defined against the grandeur of the Milky Way. So remember these elements to create an impactful Milky Way photograph with your Canon EOS R. Stability, your attitude, focus, exposure, and make it relatable. Stability, attitude, focus, exposure, and making it relatable, those are my five-pronged approach to a great Milky Way photograph with your Canon EOS R. Thanks for joining me. Until next time. All right, like and subscribe, click those buttons, check out the links to the Canon EOS R underneath this video at the bottom, and uh, thanks for joining me. Hey, if you're joining this video and no one has told you this today, let me be the first one to tell you, you're a beautiful person, you're a good person. Bye.